How did that happen? When, when, how did that happen when you were a little girl? Were you shy? Were you outgoing? Did you come from a functional family? <laughs> <or dysfunctional? laughs> um, I think, well, I came from a, a fairly functional mm -hmm. family. I was blessed in that, in that regard. Um, I was, when I was younger, I was very outgoing and loud. And then my mom would be like, be quiet. <laughs> and she thought I had, um, uh, that I was hyperactive mm -hmm. because I had so much energy. And fortunately, thank, thank, thank God, uh, the doctor at the time wouldn't put me on medication um, because he just said, no, she's got a lot of energy. She's really smart. Good luck. <laughs> Whereas now, a lot of kids would be put on medication. Okay. You know, um, to be to be more quiet, yes. to be and these yes. that just not it's, so it's not knowing how to utilize mm -hmm. and to streamline that that person's energy and their and to help them focus. Mm -hmm. So um, so yeah, that was that was when I was in uh, elementary school and then middle school. I got more shy. I was much more shy. I went through a very different period of my life and I was um, uh, more of a tomboy hmm. actually. And uh, and then in high school I I. Uh, went through some very interesting times and difficult times and then that just was a big transformation for me and who I am but I was always very empathic and very um, connected to people and always I didn't understand not being nice to people okay so not that to say that always I'm perfect, a part of who you were always a part of who I am yeah I had a little bit of that too because I saw so many kids being bullied and teased and for some reason I thought I was a stronger bolder personality that I right. went to their defense and I won like um, Miss, uh, what did I get in seventh and eighth grade? That like the nicest person, Miss Compassionate. <laughs> and I was like, what? Because <laughs> you're just doing what was normal. Like when you yeah. see someone being thrown in a trash can, that's not cool. You know? No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, and someone, you know, I like, expressed it. But yeah, I wonder if that comes from something though. You know, I remember um, like my hair was being washed by my mom when I was like four or five, and she said, why do you have curly hair? Because then it made her look like a bad mother because my hair wasn't always perfect. So I'm wondering if like an instant like that in your life made you more compassionate because that made me more compassionate about people who are less than perfect. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. And it shifted me. What was the moment that shifted you? Oh, you're asking the big question right yeah. now. We're jumping uh, right yeah. in. <laughs> like we all have like three moments, you know, turning yeah. points in our life. But the biggest honest uh, moment in my life, uh, obstacle that ended up turning into into such a blessing that really I feel like changed the trajectory of my of my life was actually um, when I was around 14. And like I had said, I went through a more shy period. I, um, I wasn't popular. Um, uh, groups of girls were not nice to me at all. Mm -hmm. And um, I ended up going through just a really difficult time where I was severely bullied and um, where I was very, um, I was sexually harassed and to the point of just not knowing what to do anymore. Um, it was How just, did that happen? What, um, what do you think triggered that? Well, I think the fact that I was so nice and I didn't have the tool set to know how to speak up. Um, I think I was insecure because I had bad acne at the time. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I didn't come from money, so none of my clothes were like top okay. notch. So yes. I just was kind of, I think, looking back, an easier target for some of the kids that were insecure or bullied at home mm -hmm. or wanting to just fit in, and um, or were jealous, you know, depending upon. Yes, of course, their issue. Their issues. Um, you know, you don't hurt people unless you're hurting. Let's be honest. Yes. So um, I think I became kind of an easy target, and there were just groups of girls that just utilize that and and I didn't know how to fight back I wasn't someone who would be verbally aggressive with somebody and um, it just became such a uh, it just escalated to such a point where I had vandalism done to my house and there was just massive slander and boyfriends that were I was dating broke up with me because they were getting you know harassment from their teammates and um, people wouldn't look at me in school it was just a very mm -hmm. difficult time there was slander as if um, there was a rumor that I that I was gay and I wasn't um, not that that would matter even if I if I was right, right, right. but um, it was as if I was being outed and I wasn't outed right, <laughs> I wasn't, right, right. But, but at that time in where I came from from the Midwest um, at that time that was a horrible thing to be so uh, actually from all of that escalating to me 
really not knowing what to do um, and going to a very, very dark place, um, I had a, a come to Jesus moment actually when uh, I was at my darkest and lowest moment and I really felt God and that's literally from that moment forward I knew I had a purpose and I went from being someone who was more of a victim and quiet and wanting to kind of fit in to all of a sudden not caring about mm. that. I went from being someone who was okay being average to being like having this fire in my belly of wanting to be extraordinary. And that was as, as a teenager? That was at 14. Okay. And it was just a real, I, I still remember it where it was almost like a light came through me and I knew God was like, no, this, there's a plan for you. And, and from that moment forward, I just became an overachiever. 